can we build a sci-fi tool belt? You betcha. Let's go. Hey, how's it going? Anthony Fro here at Crate Sci-Fi. Well, uh, all month, past couple months, I'm working on a new film. So that means new props, new costumes, uh, wearing the costume. I made this from my own tutorial. In the script, the guy's a technician, the main character, and he has a tool belt because he's doing stuff trying to fix a ship, right? So I already made this, but basically this was interesting because I had some fancy ideas, which you'll see I end up abandoning. And then um, what's fun is, you know, getting all the little things to play with. And these are all just sort of from Amazon, like, just anything that I could click and it had a button and had like a little readout I put in here. Got the logo of the world that this belongs to, glue sticks. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I did this. So in the script somewhere here, it says that he's doing something with tools. So that means we have to make it. So let's get into the build. All right, so the first thing I do is go on to Amazon, just to get this out of the way. And I just look for anything that's affordable and it's something that can go in your hand and click and maybe light up. You know, I don't want to break the bank. Uh, that's something that I use for a communication badge that gets abandoned, but you know, this is all process. So I'm just sort of looking at my loot, what I got. I like um, that this one lights up. I think that's a tire gauge. This is like a laser pointer. Um, you know, inevitably, there's going to be somebody familiar with this, right? And then I was a little reluctant. I was like, oh, it's COVID. Everybody's going to know that that's a temperature taker, right? And if you didn't, now you won't be able to unsee that. <laughs> but, you know, at this point, I don't know what the actor is going to go for. And I like to not tell them, okay, here's what you have. What I like to do is I'll fill the tool belt up. I mean, my favorite is that tire pressure gauge which I, I don't think he goes for. I think he goes for the thermometer. But I like to just leave it up to them, and it's always just kind of fun for me to see what they gravitate towards, because it's usually not what I think, and that's why I sort of do the grab bag method, because it's never what I think, and I, I find that more interesting. So now I'm just sanding these all, just prepping them. I'm gonna paint them white. Um, I just want to mask off anything that lights up or clicks or ticks, like I said, because, you know, that kind of stuff just adds production value, right? So it's just little, if you blink, you miss it, but it, trust me, it adds value, right? So if the guy's messing around, so there's the white, I like this, this bear, this bear paint that you get at a Home Depot now. And if they're clicking around and something lights up, just the fact that it lights up and I didn't add that light like in post, like in After Effects, that it's a real light. There is, I have to admit, there is something little extra about that. So much so that it's not worth it to do the stuff in After Effects and post? No. Is the stuff in post valid? Yes. But a real little dinky little LED light is, is better. <laughs> That's all I'll say on that. So now I have um, the PVC plastic. Um, I believe this is Sintra. Um, so you've seen me use this stuff before when I make like model spaceships or need to make little bits and bobs. So this is my first idea. My first idea is I'm, I think it's a great idea, right? It's otherwise I wouldn't have proceeded. <laughs> so what I'm doing now is heating up the plastic and I'm going to conform it to the shapes of all these um, little hand devices that I have, right? So it's gonna be like custom made. And as you can see now, which I'm kind of blocking out of my mind at the moment, is it's, it looks a little, you know, it's a little wrinkly, it's a little funky, not the greatest looking thing, but I'm thinking, no, it's gonna be fine. And it's all a process. And I'm thinking, well, I'm gonna cover it with some foam so that I'll smooth this out. I just need the little sort of holsters for each of these devices. And you know, this was my first idea. And I'm like, this is gonna be great. And then I get a little distracted because I'm like, ooh, I like the light. <laughs> so here I'm just laying them out and I'm thinking, you know, this is gonna be on his hip and it's gonna be a holster for each thing. And it's, you know, a tool belt. Keep that in mind, right? I want you to remember that, a tool belt. <laughs> 
<laughs> foreshadowing. And now I'm just sort of thinking, how can I make this better, right? And I'm like, okay, I just cut out each individual little, we'll call them holster, holders. And then now I got to lay them out. And first I used um, the melting glue that kind of welds plastic. That didn't work, so now I'm going to super glue. But I'm like, I'm not convinced yet this is working, but I'm sticking to it, you know, because I just, I have a pretty clear idea in my head of how, you know, I'm gonna eventually cover this with foam. Stuff's starting to slide in there. And I could tell already, like that turns the light on and it's a tight fit. And again, with actors, it just needs to be sort of bulletproof, right? And I know like, if you gotta futz around with stuff, that's never good. So now I'm taking the Dremel and I'm thinking, okay, I wanna give access, better access to this. So I'm doing like a little, you know, like a little finger sized indentation. So it's easier to grip. Here I'm like melting and like sort of teasing it out. So there's like a little bit of a flange for easy access. You know, these are all good ideas, um, but it's, it's, it's problem solving in the moment, right? Now I'm thinking, oh, let me just get a better fit, but I don't want to screw up my hand props. So I, I use the hairdryer instead of the heat gun. So now I have my three main like holster pieces and I'm gonna put them on the styrene. So this way I'm just trying to clean it up. So here I'm, I'm super gluing it, each individual one. And um, you know, this this could work. This this could work. I'm, I'm carrying on at this point. I think it does work. <laughs> so getting these all just so, I'm trying to think of on the top there, it needs space for the the head the headroom of the tools and then also i know i'm going to be attaching this to a belt so i need some space for the belt and you know this is great material to work with right you just score it with a blade um heat it with a heat gun conform it so now i'm realizing oh that's kind of stiff on the hip looks a little weird let me give it uh, a flex a bend right so I, I segment it into three pieces and then now this is what I think is is this is what's keeping me going right so this is the EVA foam that I've showed before it's sheets of it that have like a, a self-adhesive that's why I like using it so I don't have to use like rubber cement or anything it's pretty straightforward and now in my mind I'm going to add this foam and it's gonna bring it all together and it's gonna be really cool right this is what I'm thinking. It's kind. It's okay. It's kind of okay, but I'm. You know, I'm really going for it with this movie, right? So it's like I want everything to be excellent. You know, I mean, we always want that, but sometimes you want it more than others, right? So I'm. I'm struggling with this, but I'm still. <laughs> you can't give up that easy, right? I'm, I'm like, no, this is gonna work. This is gonna work. And the, and the idea here is, right, so this is, you know, all that rough and tumble sort of plastic holster. Using this EVA foam is what's really going to sort of blend it all together. And this is what's going to make it nice, right? And you can see there, kind of working, right? It's kind of, it's kind of there. Now I'm just futzing with it, trying to get it, just to get it so, right? So... Spending a little time on this because I want to show you like that's what I was going for and now I'm like That's not even no problem. I Could straighten it out, but I kind of have a, a Philosophy a credo whatever you want to call it. It's like Once you start going uh, Against the flow right well, against the grain once you're not going up river anymore at a certain point Right, you could compromise, you can make things better, but at a certain point, if you're really going against the grain, something's, you gotta listen to that, right? Something's telling you, I don't think so. I don't think so, <laughs> right? So here, I'm seeing it through. And as you can tell by looking at that, it just does not look good, right? And I'm like, Oh boy, oh boy, what am I gonna do? So, right, so even there for the demo for the video, it's like, 
Uh, there I'm thinking. I'm thinking, what the heck? Oh no, oh no. I, I'm having a hard time just taking it out of there like this. I'm, I'm in denial. <laughs> Lights are going off. <laughs> it's like, oh, get in the car. Vroom, harbor freight, you know, at, put uh, the sound effect of footsteps. Ba -ba 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 -boom. I'm like, oh, right, it's a tool belt. You ready for this? Why don't I use a tool belt? Go figure. So that's my my lesson to you, right? Don't overthink it. I'm like, it's a sci-fi tool belt. Let me use, it's like, still tool belt, right? So now I'm like, because I went to Harbor Freight, <laughs> I got a few new doodads um, that I don't even know what that blue R2-D2 looking thing was, but I was like, oh, this is cool. And then there it is, a tool belt. It's not white. So I got white leather dye. And already I'm feeling good because I haven't even started building yet. That's a knitting needle, by the way. That makes me very happy that that's a knitting needle. I'm like, oh yeah, it's a tool belt, right? And I know you're all are watching in the comments. It's like, yeah, tool belt, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> You can, and so I guess the the point I'm trying to get is, don't overthink this stuff, right? This video is a cautionary tale of overthinking, because I put the word sci-fi in front of tool belt. I had it in my head that oh, you know, I'm gonna do all this stuff where it's like, oh, it's a, a tool belt, right? I'm sure, and you know, when they're building the pyramids, they probably had some kind of tool belt, right? It's like don't overthink it. So. I got the white dye, and then now this is pretty serious operation, right? Because I have brown leather, uh, and I want to make it white. So I know it's going to take a lot of coats, a lot of heavy coats, but if I had only started with this, all this time that I'm spending to dye it is about a third of the time it took me to make that other thing that I abandoned. And you see here, like, that looks a little rough, but it's, you know, like anything else. We've got to put a couple coats on it. So I don't show it, but while I'm doing this in the background, I'm printing up logos of the world. Like you see that little emblem that appears on all the costumes and weapons and stuff. So I'm like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna stick it on the front of this and that makes it a prop piece for this movie. So here's this little prop that I'm excited about. It's some kind of light tester for something. I don't even know, but here it had, um, it was like a really weird looking like sort of screws and something that really like if if that showed up in the prop it would have taken people out of it so i just off camera put some plastic and bondo on there here i'm just um sort of messing with it but the reason i wanted to show that piece is like right as so once i started going with the river and got the tool belt then it was like while i was shopping i found that little like, like I keep calling it the R2-D2 head, that little prop that's probably my favorite thing in the belt, right? And I wouldn't have found that. So here's the white dye. I still have enough time, so I let this dry, I think, for a couple days. Uh, luckily, I didn't need it, like, the next day. And what I always found, because I, I started off doing leather work, is, um, oh, I take that back. I'm going to shoe polish it now. I forgot I did this step. So this is just, because it's white, I'm like, I let that... Um, dry for like a couple days and then it's like oh let me just shoe polish it just to really make it white right and this was very effective very inexpensive right if you were doing a low budget film you probably could have just started with shoe polish and made it white but again it needs to be right and gosh that looks so good and it's a tool belt right i mean i know you're probably all laughing at me but for me it was just kind of like why did i not start there so now I have um, some oil, you know, I don't know if you wear boots, but it always helps to put uh, a good like mink oil on the boots to soften it. And I always put that on all the leather stuff I do. It just, it's kind of like, you know, when I weather stuff on the channel and then I hit it with a clear matte finish, the, um, the conditioning oil, mousse, you know, wh whatever you're using, musk oil, that's what's, that's sort of like the clear coat. So then here's this envelope, uh, envelope. <laughs> here's this emblem that's going to make it part of my universe. It's going to make it part of my film, right? 
So I 3D printed that. And you've seen in many, many videos on this channel where, you know, I spray paint it black and put a little graphite on that. And I want to get distracted uh, with that. And here I'm just, what I'm doing here is I'm cutting a hole in the leather because I want this plastic piece to really stick on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue it to the face of the plastic. You see there, I just toothed it up. But by putting a piece on the back side, the glue will go through that hole, right? And it'll kind of make a sandwich. And then that's not going anywhere, right? My white leather tool belt that I'm going to remake a third time. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> not in this video, but it's a process. Especially when you want something to be right, you got to be prepared to start over again, right? So there's that. It's looking like a prop from the universe of my film. And it's a tool belt, right? <laughs> I think that's the fifth time I said it. Like, wow. And then these are glue sticks, right? So I was just looking for stuff to like stick in the pockets. And I was like, oh, these colored glue sticks. These are kind of like filler. There's my knitting needle. I don't know why it makes me happy that that's a knitting needle until the actor puts it on and steps onto my set. Then it's something else. There's the little R2D2 head. That was the bonus for redoing this. And look how everything just fits nice. Looks like it belongs there. Looks like a tool belt. And I think I put some foam in there so everything sits nice. And, you know, a tool belt. So let's do some beauty shots. And the, the white was tough. You know, it still looks a little dirty just from handling it. You'll see there. But overall, very happy with that. It's a tool belt, right? Happy with that. Yeah, but wait, what? What happened? <laughs> now I have a couple videos now. Um, I think the blaster, maybe another one where it starts off white and it ends up not white. <laughs> so what happened is I was getting ready to shoot. We shot last week um, and the white was just not working, right? The pristine white, what I realized, and I like to share this all with you guys so that you can, uh, learn from what I'm doing or learn from my mistakes or missteps. I just don't have the budget to shoot pristine white. It just doesn't look good. So I had to go back to my um, sort of ragged, world-worn look. Um, so this is the same exact tool belt though, right? So in this video, I just showed you how to make it white. Um, so that's valuable. As far as just not making it white, this is just the same exact um, tool belt, just I didn't dye it and I did the same weathering and everything. I, I kept the tools white, but I really sort of dinged them up um, with some nicotine spray on there and some uh, rotten stone, some really cool stuff. Let me show you though, uh, like I said, we shot last week, so let me show you this in action on the film. Technician Zevi, acknowledge. Technician Zevi. You need to respond, technician. <laughs> Very happy with that, right? Looks cool. Looks sci-fi. It achieved everything that I wanted. And like I said, you know, in the future, maybe something white, but at least that's something new to the channel. Like if you want to do something pristine white, this video shows you that. Just the result is this. And on top of that, you know, I'm just sharing with you warts and all process, right? It's like you know, what, what happens is, you know, I'm, I'm committed to making this film. I, I schedule the dates and then we get close and I have hired um, crew people and ordered food and rented the location. And then it's like, I spent all the time and effort on this. And then it's like the white wasn't right. And I had to scramble and redo this because you have to, you have all these other pieces in motion. You're spending all this money. You just can't be like, uh, it's not really what I wanted, but we'll go with it anyway. Like you gotta correct it, right? And at the end, I think it all—it always turns out better than what you expected if if you if you kind of put forth that that type of mindset, that type of effort. But yeah, as always, I hope that you found this video my misstep <laughs> useful. <laughs> and be sure to like, share, leave a comment. Love to read the comments. And check out the merch shop. We got hats. We got shirts. Buying that stuff really helps the channel. Helps me to keep the lights on the shop. And remember, I'm just here to help make sci-fi. <laughs>